This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, good morning everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Um, Erev, Erev. The night of Pesach. You know, the night of Pesach evokes very warm memories in everybody's mind. You know, there's something magical, something magical about the night of Pesach. The Kedusha, you can almost feel it. You know, even the painters, they try to capture on canvas the, uh, the majesty of the Jewish family sitting around the Seder table. And you have so Jew- some Jews, they're so alienated from their culture. They don't know Shema Yisrael, but they know Manishtana Halayla Hazam Mikal Halaylas. You know the story about the, the Englishman, you know, a great literary giant, and he gets word from the Queen of England that he's going to be knighted. Right? So... Uh, he, uh, and he, he said, they tell him he's going to be invited to a special procession and uh, he's going to come in front of the queen. He's going to bow down on his knee. He's going to get down on his knee. The queen is going to put the scepter on his shoulder and he has to invoke the special Latin phrase. So, okay, he's practicing the special Latin phrase. He's, he has it down. He's confident that when it's his turn to, to kneel in front of the queen, he's going to say the special Latin phrase with conviction. Vayihi hayoim, he comes before the queen. He gets down before her. And as she's about to put the scepter on his shoulder, he forgets the phrase. So he doesn't know what to do, what's he going to do, that it's, he's going to be the laughing, laughing stock of England. And he remembers a certain phrase from his early childhood, and he says, Ma nishtana halayla hazem mikal halaylois. Right? The queen doesn't know what he's talking about. She says, why is this night different from all the other nights? <laughs> okay. So anyway, that's the question we want to ask today. Why is the night of Pesach different from all the other nights? And we'll see there are major differences. First of all, the night of Pesach, we perform more mitzvot than any other night of the year. By far. No comparison. No connect, right? You can't, you can't even compare. In fact, we say in the Haggadah, we say in the Haggadah, Ba'avur Zeh, many times we bring down this passage. God tell the Ben Ulemar Ba'avur Zeh. Right, and the Vujahan brings down Bavur Zeh, Zeb is the Gematria 12. Because of the 12 mitzvahs we do the night of the Seder, Hashem took us out of Mitzrayim. Right, the Vujahan brings down what are the 12 mitzvahs we do. You have the Arba Kaisais is 4, Charoises is 5, Karpas is 6, you wash until Siadayim, 7 and 8, Hamoitzi, Matzah, Moror, and Kairich. 12 mitzvahs. What other time of the year do we do 12 mitzvahs? I mean, sukkahs? What? Only do one mitzvah. You sit in the sukkah. What is the magid? Rosh Hashanah. What is the magid? Magid. Oh! Now, the, the, the problem with what the Avudraham is saying is, is the, that the he left out the most obvious mitzvah of the <laughs> night, the biggest mitzvah. See, for you, Tzis Mitzrayim, the Yigana Talabincha. So the Chidah, of course, he doesn't let that go by. You know, he's a, uh, Chidah's not going to let that go by. So the Chidah asks in the Simcha Saregal, why didn't the Avudraham bring down the mitzvah of Sipur Yitzis Mitzrayim? So the Chidah says that the Avudraham only wants to count the mitzvahs Maisios, right? The, the mitzvahs that we do with action. Dibur, Sipur Yitzis Mitzrayim is only a Dibur, so he didn't, he didn't count that, okay? But I found something very interesting. If you were uh, to count... Dibur is not a Maisa? In the, dibur is not a Maisa. And what is Mechamer B'Shabbat? Mechamer is a Maisa. It says a Maisa. It's a Maisa. But Dibur is not a Maisa. For instance, the Lashon Hara, you don't get Malchus because it's a Lav She'en by Maisa. Well, Mechamer, Mechamer, Lav Mechamer B'Shabbat. I think that is a Maisa. It's a Maisa, so you make a Dibur, you deal. You say deal to the Behema, he moves. So it's, a, it's Lav. But that's through your... It's attributed to you. The act of the Mechamer, Mechamer. The act of the Behema. The Behema moves. The act, the because you, 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 you did it with your mouth. The act of the behemoth is attributed to you. Miyach is to you. The act of the behemoth is miyuch is to you. Yeah. What's the difference whether it's a mice or a nice? It's a mechamer, it's a mechamer. It's not in the main category of Avorzeh. However, Rabbi Isai, if we were to count all of the mitzvahs that we do the night of the Seder, what caused the, the physical acts, the speaking, the minhagim, the customs, if you count everything, if you count everything, you have a total, Rav Shlema Brevda, right? Shlema Brevda wrote many svarim and perushim on the svarim of the Gra, and he writes that he heard from an Ishirelikim by the name of Rabbi Yosef Shlema, who was a Rav, he was a Rebbe in Mir, who heard from Rabbi Hanan Vasserman, Zech Sak Levracha, who heard, he has a tradition from the Vilna Gain, that if you were to count up all the mitzvahs you do the night of the Seder, Dairaisa, Dairabanon, 64 mitzvahs the night of the Seder. 
It's a lot of mitzvahs, right? Why? Why of all the nights of the year did Hashem designate that this night we perform more mitzvahs than any other time? Okay. We come to a very important tshuva of the Radvaz. The Radvaz, Rabbi David ben Zimra, was, by the way, a Rebbe of the Arizal and the Shita Mikubetzas. He was born in 1480. He was exiled from Spain in the year um, 1492 when he was 12 years old. He goes to Tzfas. He then goes to Shalayim. He comes back to Egypt. He was the chief rabbi of Egypt for 40 years. And he published more than 2,400 tshuvos. Many, many tshuvos. The rabbi is the rabbi of that reason. So he asked the following question. Very important question. Sha'alta mimeni. You asked the following, you asked the question for me. Oidiachadati. And I will let you know my opinion. Ma nishtana chametz bePesach mikol isur in Shabbat Torah. Why is chametz on Pesach different from all the isur in the Torah? Shehechmira all of Torah. The Torah is so machmer with chametz more than any other lav in the Torah. More than Shabbos. More than Avodah Zarah. Right? Avodah Zarah. You ever see? Is there a chiv? You know, if let's say a guy walked into your house one time with a getchka, you know, maybe and, and maybe some crumbs of it fell off. Do you have a chiv bedika? Do you have a chiv to burn it? Do you have a chiv to check the cracks and the crevices? Do you have a chiv to be mafker? I mean, you don't have any of these. Is it is it aser b'mashahu? And by chametz, there are so many chumras of chametz that you don't find by any other lav in the Torah. Why? Why is chametz so chumr? First of all, the hatzrichay bedika. You have to search for the chametz. The siruf, you got to burn it. The kale, you have to destroy it. And if that's not enough, if the fact that you have to throw it in the fire is not enough, you have to be mevatel it, right? You have to render it ownerless, the gambitol. And v'hoisifu chachamim lahatzrichay bedika b'chayrin uvestakin. The chachamim went further. They said you have to search the cracks, the crevices, ula chapi sacharav, ula shari shoysim ikogvulav. And not only that, you're not allowed to see it, you're not allowed to find it. You don't have anything comparable in any other lab in the Torah. Right? 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 Chametz on Pesach. You know, you have a big vat of chicken soup. It's five million gallons big. And you throw in one crumb of chametz. What, what do you do? You have to throw out the whole pot. What if, you know, I... No, no what? No, chametz is not bata b'shish. Before Pesach, it's bata b'shish. After, on Pesach itself, it's not even bata b'mash. Even a mashu is up. What if you have a big vat of... It's a Let's say on, uh, on, on, uh, you have a big vat of chicken soup, right? 500 gallons, and someone pours in a gallon of milk. What do you do? Kasher. You eat it. That's what you do. You eat it. It's bata b'shish. What if you have a big vat of chicken soup, and someone pours in chazer fat? What do you do with the chicken soup? Eat you eat it. The Bnei Yisachar says, you're mechuyif to eat it. Because you have to, you're mechuyif to rely on, she, on Bittal Bashishim. He says, because every all food has certain itzitzis in it, so if this becomes mutter, it's, it's better to eat that than chicken soup that doesn't have the, the schmaltz in it. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's it's bato, right? That's the answer. Yeah. And yet when it comes to chametz on Pesach, if one crumb of chametz falls into it, you've got to throw out everything. Why? What's, why is chametz worse than chazer? Why? Right? Ah. Says the Radvaz, the Enum is bato klal, the Chumrois keilu loy nimtsu bechalu wa yisurin shabbat. We don't find Chumrois like this in all the Yisurim. So you'll say, ah, oh, I'll tell you why the Torah is so machmir. Because Chumrois carries with it a chiv kares. No. Di mishum de isbe kares, hare chila vedam. What about the forbidden fats and the blood? Also. You're right. Is there a chiv to burn chila? Is there a chiv to be mafkir chila? Is there a chiv to search for chila? No. So maybe you'll say, well, chametz is more chametz because it's aser bahana. No, there are a lot of things that are aser bahana. V'yimishom da aser bahana, hare clay hakerem v'shar hanisko v'kama yisurei hana shaloi hichmira toira bahem kol kach. There are many yisurim that are aser bahana, and yet there's no chiyav bittel, there's no chiyav sreifa. It's not bot- it's bottle. You don't have to search the b'chayim of a stocking. Ah. <clears throat> 
Says Ravaz, I'll tell you why the Torah is still machmer with chametz. Because since you eat chametz the whole year, we're afraid if we're not going to be machmer, you're, you're going to come to eat it, right? What we call loy bedili in shimine. People are used to eating it the whole year, so we have to take extra precautions. Says Ravaz, no. If it's because the whole year we partake of it, and therefore we have to take extra precautions. You ever find that a Nazir who drinks wine the whole year when he's a Nazir has to burn all the wine in his house and search for the wine in the crevices and make sure he's mafker all the wine? And no! And if, and if wine fell into the Nazir's chicken soup, he could eat the chicken soup. It's batal b'shishim. Even though loy b'dili minei kalashana. Right? Yayin le Nazir loy b'dili minei. What about chadash? Chadash, the whole year it's permitted except for a certain time. Do we find these chumras by Chadash? So basically, the Radvaz has made three suggestions. Why is Chamed so strict? It's not because it's a Chiv Kares. It's not because it's Asr Bahana. And it's not because Loi Bedili in Shimine. It's a good Kasha, right? By the way, there, we have seven chumras by Chamed that we don't find by any other Isser. It's Asr B'mashahu, number one. You need Bedika, number two. You have to check Chayr and Ustakin. You need Bittal. You need Sreifa. Ba'al Yira and Ba'al Yimatza. You don't have any of these restrictions by any other lav in the Torah. So, it's a good kasha. The Radvaz throws up his arm, throws up his arms, and he says, there is no answer, al derech hapshat, why Chametz is so strict. And therefore, the Radvaz says at the end of the tshuva, look at the underlined part, the Al Kain Ani Soimech says Ravaz, I need to rely on the following tradition. Amash Amru Chazal b'Midrashos. We find in the Medrash, Ki Chametz Ba Pesach Remez Li Yitzhara. Chametz on Pesach is a allusion to the Yitzhara. V'hu Saar Shabi Yisa. That's the yeast in the dough, right? Like the Gemara says in Masech Brachas number six. That the Gemara goes through many of the tefillos that certain Amoram would say after the Shemona Esed. Rabbi Alexandri, after he finished Shemona Esed, he would say the following tefillah. Rebani Shalaylam. Ritzoyneinu lasoyz ritzoyncha. Our will is to do your will. Yes, so what's, so what's going wrong? You know, what's the problem then? Umi ma'akev. Sa'ar shabi'isa, the yeast and the dough. Shibad Machios, the Goyim, right? So the Goyim we understand, you know, when you live in a non-Jewish society and you're bombarded with their ideals, it affects you. But what's the yeast in the dough? I mean, how does eating challah and cookies and cake, how does it stop you from, uh, from serving Hashem? I know, you eat it, you become tired, you can't let, yeah, but that's, that's the whole thing. How does the yeast in the dough stop us from serving Hashem? The answer is, look at number seven, Rashi says, What's Sa'ar Shabayisa? Yetzer Hara. Shabu Vavenu. The Yetzer Hara is called the yeast in the dough. That's Hichmit Sanu. That's what causes us to go sour. So Chametz is a remez to the Yetzer Hara. Okay? Says the Radvaz. Very nice. Chametz is a remez to the Yetzer Hara. Falachain. And therefore, when it comes to the Yetzer Hara, says Radvaz back in number four. Kale Goresh Yigoresh Oisei Ha'adam Eolam. You have to completely drive out, chase out the Yitzhahara. You've got to search for the Yitzhahara in all the nooks and crannies of your personality. Even the smallest amount of Yitzhahara is not bottle. This is the truth. Listen to what's going on over here. The Radvaz is not, you know, he's not a, one of the Bali Machshava. He's, uh, he's writing Shailas at Shubas. He's trying to find out what is the reason for the halacha that Chametz on Pesach is more Chamer than any other Isra in the Torah. And he's trying to find some kind of halachic reason. He can't. He can't. And he's forced to resign himself and to say, the reason al derech hapshat for why Chametz is so Chamer is based on Drush. Right? Chametz represents the Yitzhahara. The Yitzhahara is a mortal enemy. Says the Chida, an amazing concept. There are times where when there is no Pshat and you have to say a Drush, the Drush is upgraded. Right? We have four levels of Torah. We have the Pshat, we have the Remez, we have the Drush on the side. There are times when there is no Pshat. And in that case, the different levels get upgraded. Look at the Chida writes in number five. Look! Look honestly. Shaharav Zal Pishbesh Vlaimatsatam that the Radvaz searched and he has not found a reason. 
L'chumros chametz, for the chumros of chametz, asher achmira Torah, that the Torah was so machmer with it. V'chazal, t'fei mishari surin, more than any other, sir. Apshat, right? The Radvaz could not come up with a simple interpretation why chametz is more strict than any other, sir. V'hadin, right? V'hadin. V'chot suruch lismech atzmei al haremez. The Radvaz was forced to resign himself to remez. Ki hachametz remez liyitzahar ki mavor hei tevidvarv. Says the Chida, the Nimsa Sheharemes Shel Hachametz Hu Apshat. In other words, what the Rabbis is not is not giving us Ramazim and Drush. The Rabbis is telling us Pshat. Why was the Torah so machmir with Chametz that it's not Batel B'choshu? You have to search in the in the nooks and crannies. Ba'al Yira, Ba'al Yimatze, Bedika, Bittel, Sreifa. You know why? This is not a drush, this is not a remez. This is the simple meaning of why the Torah is so machmer, why there's a chi of kares, because chametz represents the Sahara. There is nothing worse in this world than the Yetzirah, right? right? The famous story the Chavis HaVavis brings down, there was a soldier who returned from the war. Yeah. So the Chacham says, ah, oh, you're returning from the small war, now you're ready to wage the big war. He said, what are you talking about? What's the big war? The war with the Sahara, right? That's the biggest war we have. Right? The Chavis HaVavis says... Machemes hayitzim chayola. That's look at number nine. The Chavos Havavos writes in Shayichan Hamaisa, Ki hasoyne hagadol shayish lecha ba'olam hu yitzricha. Your greatest enemy in this world is the Yitzhara. Right? If I would ask, who's your greatest enemy? You know, some people might say their boss, right? The mother-in-law, right? No, the Chavos Havavos says what? The Yitzhara. Okay. By the way, what's the difference? I don't understand the difference between Remez and Jewish I don't understand. Like here with the, the Tsar, it's the Tsar to yeast. In other words, yeast is not the Yitzhahara. If you were to, right, if you went to Wasserman's and you bought yeast, and then you threw it out, and you threw it in the garbage, you're not getting rid of your Yitzhahara. Just a Remez to Yitzhahara. Oh, because it's written, so it, it's like a rent, so there's it's a, a, a drush is like you can't see it in the Torah. It's like a drush is uh, the Yud Gimel Mido Shehatar Nid Bahem, using the certain 13 principles. Remez is a different facet of, of Tyra. But the glass but the Yetzirah is all year round, it's not all in Tyra. Uh-huh. Okay, so that's what we have to get into. But first, before we get into that, by the way, the Chida points out, how many chumras do we have with chametz? Seven. Seven. Right? You have, <coughs> look at number ten. Bedika, number one. Chipos b'chayin of is two. Bittol is three. Sreifa is four. Oyser b'choshu is five. Ba'yeraya, ba'yeimatza. Says the chida, look in the Gemara and Sukkah, Daphne and Bez. How many names does the Yitzhahara have? Seven. Sheva, Shema, Yisli Yitzhahara. Seven names. Why? Why do we have seven chumras and chametz? Because, says the Chidah, since chametz represents the Yitzhahara, and the Yitzhahara has seven names. What does it mean the Yitzhahara has seven names? Yankel, Beryl, Shema. It means he has seven tactics, you know? Seven ways. Laziness. God. You know, he has seven techniques in getting us to sin. Right? What are his names? He's called Ra. He's called Arel. He's called Tame. He's called Zvov. Right? He has seven names. Seven wonderful Abnachman names. Nachman said eight. What? Nachman and Bresla say eight. Yeah, Yish? No. What's the eighth one? Medame, Dimui. Dimui? Yeah. Quach mm. Medame. Okay. Dimyonot. Dimyonot. Imagination? So that's, the Gemara says seven Shemos of the Yet Sahara. <laughs> and Kenega that, we have, by the way, the, I believe the Imre says, how many Svarim in Chumash do we have? Right. Even though we all say Chamisha Chumash Tara, it's not true. Chatzvu Amudeha Shiva. Right? Because the Hiven Saya. The two Nuns. The two Nuns. Why seven? Barasi Yitzhahara, Barasi Torah Tavlin. You have seven Shemas for the Yitzhahara and seven nice. Chumashim. Okay. What? I, mean, I believe so. Yeah. So, so what we're learning is that our mortal enemy is the Yitzhahara. And there's nothing worse in this world than the Yitzhahara. As bad as Chil Shabbos is, as bad as Avodah Zarah is, as bad as all the Yisurim are, there's nothing worse than the Yitzhahara. And therefore, when it comes to Chametz on Pesach, we have seven Chumros that we don't have by any other Yitzhahara. So the question we have to ask, that's what someone was asking, is that, one second, you're telling me that Chazar is Batal Bashishim, right? Basta B'chalav is Batal Bashishim. B'chametz is not, because it's so bad it represents the Yitzhahara. Yitzhahara, even a Mashahu is not good. So could somebody please tell me why we're eating Chametz the entire year if Yitzhahara is so bad? Again, right, what the Chidah said is that Chametz 
It's not just a remes to Yitzhak. This is the pshat. This is the explanation. This is the most simplest. This is the simplest explanation for why we're not allowed to eat chametz, for why chametz is so strict, why you have to burn it, why you have to be mafkered, why you have to search for it in the cracks and the crevices. So if that's the case, if Yetzir Hara is the worst prohibition in the Torah, so why are you allowed to eat chametz the entire year? I mean, it doesn't make any sense. You're telling me that chazer is okay. You know, you throw the chazer in the chicken soup, it falls in, you can eat it. Right? Because not, chazer is bad, but it doesn't compare to the Yetzir Hara. So then what are you doing eating the Yetzir Why are you doing connecting to the Yetzir Hara the rest of the year? Yeah. Are we talking about chametz on Pesach though? <clears throat> Hey, if chametz falls into the soup, uh, it's no. so that's, that, that's, you're right, it's fine. But the question is why? If the understanding of why chametz is so strict is because chametz represents the Yitzhahara, right? Nah, chametz, I'm pissed off. It's chametz. Chametz. Sar right? Like the Gemara says, Omimah, Akif, Sar Shabisa. Maybe you could say another reason that Dovah Shabishlo Matir. In other words, after Pesach, he could eat the chametz. He just has to wait till after. Oh, but he can't keep it, right? He can't keep it. No, no, there, there isn't. That's part of why chametz is not bottle. I'm a glass is of it. Are, are you allowed to smell chametz? Yeah. It's, um, it's Asr Bahana. It's Asr Bahana. So you mean if I pass by a bakery, a shelly or shall I shall be shwacher? Shelly. If I shall be shwacher, I can smell. Shelly. No shall be shwacher. If I pass by, let's say, in a bakery or a grocery bakery, it comes out to such a good smell of uh, baking bread. I can smell it or not? You can even have the guy's comments in your house. Yeah, what is it? No, what about my comments if it smells? Comments? Yeah. You didn't sell it. No. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Okay, so that's the question. The question is if comments is so strict, because the reverend is her. Don't refrain yourself. What? The answer to is refrain yourself. <laughs> Why, why are we allowed to eat chametz the Okay, so get, fasten your seatbelts. We're going to advance the following incredible idea. This is based on the, the uh, machshava of Rav Shimshon David Pincus, but also mostly based on a very uh, special Haggadah called Haggadah Yad Mitzrayim from Rav Yitzchak Isaac Chavar. Rav Yitzchak Isaac Chavar was considered one of the... the um, the Talmidim of the Vilna Gain, and he is Mazber in many places the philosophy and the Machshavas of the Vilna Gain. Rabbi Yitzhak Isaac Chavar, who was a Gain in Nigla and in Nistar. Okay. He says the following idea. It? It's going to be from 11 and 12. You'll see. Okay. The Torah tells us that when the Rabbani Shalom took us out of Mitzrayim, he took us out of B'choydesh HaAviv in the spring. Why do we need to know that? Why is that so important? What does that mean? Just think for a minute. What is the spring? Right, you have the winter. The animals go into hibernation. The, tr- the leaves fall off the tree. The plants die. The world is almost in a state of Misa. Right? And all of a sudden the spring comes. Everything blossoms. The animals start frolicking. And the trees start blossoming. The world, so to speak, is born. Right? It was, it was nearly it was dead. Right? There was no life. There was no chiyas in the world. And the world is born. Why did Hashem take us out of Mitzrayim at that time? The idea is that Kla Yisrael also, to a certain extent, was kemat like they were dead. Yes. Right? We were languishing, we were wallowing in the time. We reached Mem Teshari Tumah. We felt to the lowest possible spiritual level. Even physically, we have slave mental- mentality. We were, we were forced in labor for many generations. Says the Arizal, amazing idea. Our period of being in Mitzrayim was like the pregnancy and the incubation of Kal Yisrael. And Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim was the Leda. Okay? That's what the Arizal says. Arizal says that Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim was Bebechinas Leda. Kla- leaving Mitzrayim was like being born. The other before she said it because it was easier and the best weather in the year. That's what Rashi says, right? <laughs> That's what Rashi says. But the, the Arizal says the uh, Kal Yisrael leaving Mitzrayim was the Leda, the birth. And our stay in Mitzrayim was the incubation, the pregnancy. Okay, that's Ad Khan Divrei Ha'ariza. Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim was the Leda. Being in Mitzrayim was the Ibor. Okay. Now Rabbi Yitzchak Isaac Chavar takes this idea. You see he does the most amazing things. It says like this. Why did Hashem specifically take us to Mitzrayim, right? Mitzrayim is considered the dirtiest 
filthiest, right? It's called Erva Sa'aretz. It's a riot, right? It's Kemase Eretz Mitzrayim Loitasu. Of all the nations of the world, there is no nation that are like Behemos, like Mitzrayim, right? Zirma Susim, Zirma Sam. Why did Hashem specifically take us to this lowly, this meistic place? It says Rabbi Sakai is a clever. For a child to develop properly, B'mei Imo, what's going on, B'mei Imo? It's dark. It's slimy. It's moss, right? If anybody ever saw... What? But the makayim. The makayim. For a child to develop, that's the, the metzius in the, in the world. Right? You see what comes out. It's the, the, the most meistic place in the whole world is the place where the child develops. But it's perfect to develop. Ah, but that's how Hashem is. Perfect. Therefore, <laughs> for Hashem to allow Klal Yisrael to be and develop as an Ubar, it had to be in the darkest, slimiest, grimiest place in the world. Where is that? Mitzrayim. It's Erva Sa'aretz. Zirma Susim Zirma Sam. Mem Teshari Tama. That's the way the, the Vlad develops. Okay. Says Rabbi Yitzhak is a cover, right? Pregnancy has... Three trimesters, right? You have the first three months the Gemara talks about, the second three months, the last three months. What happens in the first three months? Right? A woman during her first three months, you can't tell anything's going on, right? She doesn't tell anyone, she's, right? Chas Hashem to tell. It's a secret, it's top secret. Nobody knows. Nobody knows, right? The first trimester of Kali Yisrael Mitzrayim, we went down to Mitzrayim, Yaakov was still alive, the Shvatim were alive, we were autonomous. You look at us in Mitzrayim, it doesn't look like we're, we're in Shibud. We're not in Shibud. Right? We have our own yeshiva. We're, uh, we're, the Mitzrayim are not subjugating us. We're not doing avodah. That was the first trimester of Mitzrayim. Okay. What's the second trimester of pregnancy? Says Rabbi Sakai Zichavar. Ah, uh, the baby starts getting a little bit bigger. It becomes a little bit more painful. It's hard for the mother to walk. Now, the second trimester of Klai Yisrael and Mitzrayim the Mitzrayim started to subjugate us. We started to do the Avoida. Vayaka Melech Al Mitzrayim. You look at what's going on. You see, Ep is something. There's a, there's a baby over here. There's a pregnancy happening, right? The same way the second three months, you could tell there is a pregnancy. The second period of our stay in Mitzrayim, you could tell we were being subjugated. We come to the third stage of, of pregnancy, right? The last trimester. What happens? The baby's very big. And it's very painful for the mother. She can't get up. She's lying in bed. And it hurts. Every, every bone hurts. And the inexperienced mother thinks, the more painful it is, the longer this thing is going to last and the never-ending it's going to be. Right? But the experienced mother knows just the opposite. The more painful it is, the closer the, the end is. is the, the closer the light is at the end of the tunnel. So too... The last 86 years of Mitzrayim from the birth of Miriam, Vayimaru es Chayayim, things were very, very bitter. And some Jews thought, oh, we'll never get out of here. The more control they have over us, the more miserable they make our lives, the longer we'll be here and it will be never ending. But it was just the opposite. Because it was because they embittered our lives so much. That's why even though we were supposed to be in Mitzrayim 430 years, because they made it so bitter, that's what sped up the process. I basically listen to this. We know <clears throat> the Gemara tells us, right? Uh, we say in the Haggadah. We make a drasha. Look at number fifteen. Right? Right? We make a big deal. Who took us out of Mitzrayim? Not Moshe, not Malachim, not Tzrafim, not Eifanim, not the Chayyus Hakodesh. Nobody other than the Rebbeinu Shalom himself. The Avarti, right? The Hikesi, Es Eshvatim, Ani Hashem. I have a kasha for you. Hashem, why did Hashem have to do it himself? Why couldn't he send a malach? What would have been so terrible? You know, let Hashem do what he's doing otherwise. And there are enough malachim in Shemaim to take care of Yitzhak Mitzrayim. Why is it so important that Hashem himself had to do it? 
Says Rabbi Yitzhak Isaac Chavar, I'll tell you why. Because Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim was the Leda, the birth of Klal Yisrael. And the Gemara in Taina says, there are three Mavteichos, B'yadr Shal HaKadosh Baruch Hu, She'eno Nimsar Bidei Shliach. God has three keys, He never gives it to a Shliach. What are the three keys? Rain, Tchiyas oh. HaMesim, oh. and Chaya, childbirth. The key of childbirth is a key that only Hashem maintains possession of. Oh, says Rabbi Yitzhak is a clever. You know why Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim was Ani Hashem V'layacher, Ani V'lay Malach, Ani V'lay Saraf, Ani V'lay Shliach? Because this is a job only the Rebbein Yisholem himself could do. Because this is Leida, this is Chaya, this is the birth. Birth is a key that only Hashem has control of. He doesn't give it to any Shliach and therefore that is why we stress in the Haggadah. Ani Hu V'layacher. Nobody else could do this job. By the way, what does the Gemara say in Nida? Ein psichas hakever beloy dam. What was the first makam in Mitzrayim? Dam. Dam. Why? Because aha, as the end is coming near, and the uba and the uterus, right? The rechem is opening. Ein psichas hakever beloy dam. That's the first symptom. The first symptom of the leda is always the dam. Says Rabbi Yisroel Kaiser Chaver. We find. <clears throat> Look at number 18. What about our gardens? What? Over 2,000 years ago. Right. How long are we going to be pregnant? It's a long, it's a long one. <laughs> right? <laughs> it's a long one. The elephant pregnant. Right? We say in Parshas Bay. Ki meitzei scha v'yaretz mitzrayim arenu nefla ois. That's Hashem. V'hoi sa tsa'aka g'dayla b'chal eretz mitzrayim. Right? What does the Torah tell us? There was a scream in Mitzrayim. Asher kamoyu le'niyasa. There never was such a scream. The kamoyu le'sas. There will never be such a geshrei. Who cares? Well, why is the Torah telling me that there was never such a loud scream and there never will be such a loud scream? I'll ask you a question. Who screams louder than anyone in the world? Labor. A woman giving birth. Right? Labor. And that's if it's a small baby. Right? I heard... It's a, Someone had an 11 pound baby. You can just imagine what kind of shrieks were going on over there. And imagine if you're having twins. It's double. And imagine if you're giving birth to an entire Ummah, an entire nation. Right? Oh. Like it says in the Vaschanan, Oya Nisa, Lakim Lavoy, Lakachas, Loy Goy, Mikarev Goy. So now Mitzrayim, the aim, is not giving birth to one, not giving birth to twins, giving birth to Shishim Rivoy. You could just imagine what kind of geshrei they let out. That's what the Torah says. V'haisat sa'akka gedoyla b'chal eretz mitzrayim asher kamayu lay niyasa v'chamayu lay sa'isa. That's referring to Marcus Bechoros. Yeah, but uh, in this context, Rabbi Yitzhak HaZechavah is saying it's referring to the, the process, the process of the leda. This is the, uh, the beginning of the la- labor and delivery, as they say. Okay. A child is born, right? So the Gemara tells us in Shabbos, the first moments after birth are critical, right? Very critical. The baby is very sensitive, doesn't have immunity. Anyone who goes near, it's not just enough to wash your hands. You know, you've got to put on the masks and you've got to take all the... Everything has to be completely sterile, right? There can't be any imperfections. And there's certain activities you have to do to the child, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the Gemara in Shabbos says, you're allowed, even you're allowed to be Michal Shabbos to take care of the newborn baby. You're allowed to warm up water. You're allowed to swaddle the Avarim. You're allowed to, there's seven, seven activities you do to the newborn child that you don't do to anybody during the rest of their life. Because when a child is born, everything has to be sterile. The child is very sensitive. It's very delicate. And you have to be so careful with everything you do to it and everything the child eats. Are you even allowed to be Mechal Shabbos to protect the child, to warm the water, to swallow, swallow? You have to suction out the lungs, right? Says Reb Shimshon Pinkus. The night of Pesach is the Leda of Klaus. That's when we were born, right? It's like we're a newborn infant. The mitzvahs we do, the night of the Seder, these are like the activities mm. that you have to do to the newborn child, right? Like the Gemara in Shabbos says on Kuf Chavtes. There's seven malachas you have to do to the child, specifically at the moment that it's born. All the mitzvahs, the 12 mitzvahs, the 64 mitzvahs that we do the night of the Seder, these are the special activities that we do to the child because these, these mitzvahs that we do the night of the Seder, 
is what gives us spiritual life for our entire lives, right? The same way when a child is born, by the food you give it then, right? You don't give it a matzah. The, f- <laughs> the food, maybe we should. The food that we give the child right after it's born, right? The mother doesn't even produce milk then. The mother produces a special colostrum which cleans out the lungs, cleans out the digestive system, gives it nutrients, and it's those nutrients that give the baby kayak for its entire life. Whatever, they suction out the lungs, they put the drops in the eyes. These are things that give the child kayak for its entire life. The mitzvahs of Leil Seder, says Rav Shimshim Pinkas, are like the activities that you do, the mitzvahs that we do are the activities that you do to the newborn child that give us the spiritual chiyas for the entire year. That is why we have more mitzvahs the night of the Seder than any other time. Because this is when we're born. We're like the newborn child that we have to do certain things to ensure that the rest of our lives will be able to continue in the correct path. All the 12 Bavurzeh, the 64 mitzvot, these are the special activities that we have to do to the newborn child. And that is why the food that we eat on Pesach has to be different than the rest of the year. The rest of the year. A little Yet Sahara is not so terrible. I think like the Gemara in Yuma talks about how the Antje Knesset Hagdoila First they dive into be mavatal avodah They were successful. So they said, ah, you know, while we're at it, let's be mavatal or the Yitzhahara. What happened? The Gemara says, even the chickens stop laying the eggs, right? What does that show you? Ken. For the world to exist, you need Yitzhahara. You need a little Yitzhahara. Mm-hmm. You have to know how to control it. You have to know how to keep it in check. But with no Yitzhahara at all, the world cannot exist. Mm-hmm. But when we're born, the same way... Right? After when a child is one years old, two years old, you know, you can start giving it some pizza already. But, you can give a newborn child pizza? No. Only the most sterile, the most pure and clean food. Only, right? Only the formula. Only the special food. What do you mean? But uh, it needs certain... No, not yet. Not yet. When the child is born, everything it eats has to be completely pure, clean, sterile, because the child doesn't have immunity yet. Right? It's not able to protect itself. Once a child gets older and it has its own immunity, five carrots. Some yeah. real, so it's good, give him some, you know, give him some junk food. It's not going to kill him, right? It's okay. <laughs> but when the baby is born, if you can imagine a parent fed the baby dipsy doodles, right? You'll be arrested, <laughs> right? But after the child is one years old, two years old, child can, abuse. nothing, that's not so terrible. But when the child is a baby, all the food that he eats has to be completely sterile. Yeah, yeah. Says Rav Pinkus. The rest of the year, we already have our own immunity. We already were makabal the Torah. We're able to fight the Yitzhahara. A little Yitzhahara won't kill you. But on Pesach, that's the time we're of our birth. That's the Leda. Everything we eat has to be completely pure and clean and sterile. And when it comes to the birth, even a mashahu of Yitzhahara is not buckle. You have to search for it in the nooks. In the crannies, Baal Yera, Baal Yematza, Bedika, Bittel, Srefa. No Yetzirah is tolerated and at the moment of Leda. Yetzirah don't rami no rub. I mean, Hashem installed the Yetzirah at birth. That's when, that's when it comes. Ki Yetzirah leva Adam. Rami no that's in Parash Noah. Because of Schar V'yonish, that it should be balanced. But that's, the Yetzirah soul doesn't even come to the Yerba Mitzvah, but the Yetzirah comes in. As soon as you're born. You need, you, even, uh, even the baby needs a little Yetzirah, right? Uh, otherwise he wouldn't come out, right? Because I'll say, the kicking, get me out of here, that's also, uh, you know, the influence of the Yetzirah. Yeah. So you need a little... Not, not surrounding the uh, the mashal of the our Yetzirah is, is to the food of the baby, not to the Yetzirah of the baby, right? In other words, what we're saying is the same way after a Leda, the standards are much higher than the rest of, of the life. So too in Ruchnias. The standards of Ruchnias after the spiritual Leda are also higher than any other time. In other words, just like the physical Leda, right? Every, we have higher standards in what we do to the child, in the, in the care, in the sterility. Everything has higher standards. So too in the... Uh, we could say another thing. Right? The Arizal says, the word Pesach... Stand, right? It's made up of two words. Pesach. The mouth that speaks. What does that mean? Somehow in Mitzrayim, right? Paro not only enslaved us, he enslaved our Kayach Hadibor. He's Pera. Right? That's why he's Pera. That's why where did we go free? Pi Hachirot. Yeah, Pi Hachirot. Right? Sogar Alehem Hamidaber. Hamidaber. 
Sagar Aleim, the Kaya Chadibur was enslaved. That's what that Rizal says. That somehow in Mitzrayim, Paro enslaved our Kaya Chadibur. And on Pesach, when we were released, our freedom to speak was opened up. Pesach, the mouth that speaks. And that's why we elevate the Kaya Chadibur with Sipur Yitzchitz Mitzrayim. Ad Khan Harizal, obviously, it's Amaik, Amaik. Kabbalah, right? Kabbalah. But, according to what we're saying, it fits in beautifully. Says the Gemara Nida Daf Lamed. E Ubar Imai Piv Sasum. His mouth is the Chashayatzel Avir Oilam Niftach Hasasum. A child in his mother's womb, says the Gemara Nida, the mouth is closed. Like the Arizal says, Paroi, Paro is, you know, is the host mother, so to speak. He sealed our mouth. Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim was the Leda, Pesach, the mouth is able to speak. Says Rabbi Yitzhak Isaac Chavar, this taps it off. Chametz, Matzah. They both have the letter Mem. They both have the letter Tzadi. There's only one difference. Chametz has the Ches, Matzah has the opening. Until, while we were in Mitzrayim, the Rechem was sealed closed. The Ches was closed. But as soon as Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, the opening of the hay is the Pesach Haleda. That's the Pesach that allowed us for, allowed our birth. That's where we came out of. So the mitzvah of Matzah, the Chametz, the Ches, which was sealed up and opened, that allowed for the Leda of Klal Yisrael. And that's why we have the mitzvah of Matzah so important. Because that's what allowed us to come into this world as Oivdei Hashem. Okay, that's what Rabbi Yitzhak Isaac Chavar says. And with this we're trying to explain why we have more mitzvahs, the night of Pesach, than any other time. This is because at the moment of birth there are more activities, there are more special things that have special care that has to be done for the child because it's these activities that give the child the kayak and the ability to continue throughout its, their entire life. Okay. Now what does this mean exactly? Yitzhiya Smutayim, we were, we were uh, embryo and then we're born with Yitzhiya Smutayim. What's that supposed to mean? What does that mean we were born with Yitzhiya Smutayim? How were we born? I mean, we were around, we were people. Right? I mean, what happened? Nation. It's a nice uh, remez, but what does it mean we were born? Okay. Comes the Abarbanel. And the Abarbanel, a Magadah Shal Pesach, he learns that the kasha of the Manishtana is not just the kasha, you know, why is tonight different than all other nights? The kasha of the Manishtana is a much deeper question. We know when a person brings a carbon taida, you have to bring chametz and you have to bring matzah, right? Lechem, chametz and chalas matzah. Now, Klai, so when they left Mitzrayim, they had to bring a carbon taida. In fact, they fell into all four categories of those who have to bring a carbon taida. They crossed the Midbar, they crossed the Yam, they were like a Chaylash and a Srapa, they left the Beis Hasim, they left jail. And therefore, presumably, carbon Pesach is what type of carbon? Carbon taida. Carbon taida. Barbanel. Why is this carbon taida different than all other carbon taidas? That's a kasha. So comes the Chsam Sofer. It's such a good kasha. So where do we give the answer? What's the answer? Says the Chsam Sofer. Let me tell you what the answer is. You know what it means? That on at Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, Klal Yisrael was born. It means we weren't born. We were always the Jewish people. We became a nation of Oivdei Hashem, yeah. right? Until then, we were Eiroim, we were Arya, we were Memtesh Toma. We did not, it was Ke'ilu, we had no career of being a nation of Oivdei Hashem. Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim means we were born in the sense that we now became a nation that are dedicated Amzu Yatsar Tali to Hilasi Yisapir. We became a nation of Oivdei Hashem. Now, if, you're, if, we, if we're starting our Oivdei Hashem, what do you have to do? What kind of carbon do you have to do when you inaugurate Oivdei Hashem? Not a carbon taida. Miluim. The carbon miluim. Like we're going to lay next week, uh, Pasha Shmini. The Miluim were the carbonists that were brought when they inaugurated the Mishkan. The Miluim are only Matzah. Shiva Yimei Miluim. The Shiva Yimei Miluim. In other words, 
When we say that Yitzhak Susan was the birth of Klai Yisrael, this is when we initiated and inaugurated ourselves as being Oyvei Hashem. So the Kasha was, presumably the Karim Pesach is a Karim Milumim. So the question is, what are you bringing Chametz Umatla? Says the Chsam Seifer, you, no, you're not understanding what it's in the time. But yeah, presumably it's a carbon tida, so it should be Chametz Umatla. Chametz Umatla. Chametz Umatla. Chametz Umatla. No, you missed the boat. This is not a carbon tida. This is a carbon miluim. Ah, oh, the carbon miluim is only matza. Carbon miluim is only matza. What? He has a, I'm saying it for my purposes. I twisted it a little bit. What? Where does he say that? Where does he say that? He says afterwards, Kakarban Miluim. He says, You see, Vahainu Kakarban Miluim, Shamilo Yadena Lavoidasai. That line the, with the Lichluch, you have to see, I cut out most of the piece. You're on 27? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll it's, tell it's, you after. It's a fifth line from the bed. Yeah, yeah. But he says, Vahainu Kakarban Miluim. That's the. That's what I'm focusing on. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not explaining that. Well, <laughs> we, we, we come to listen to you. Okay, that, that, fine. So that, that's the, yeah, the answer. Is in other words, the Leda, the, the Leda of, the Leda of Klal Yisrael is, what we mean is, what we mean is, this is a Milum, this is a Chinuch of Klal Yisrael as Oyvdei Hashem. Rabbi Avram Shor suggests in his Haggadah, what's the Indian of wearing the Kittel? Oh. What's the Indian of wearing the Kittel that I had to say there? The Gemara says in the Sech Tainis, when Moshe Rabbeinu did the Avodah during, during the Zayim Miluim, what did he wear? Did he wear the Big Day Kahuna? Says the Gemara, no! Beged Lavan Sheim Lo Yimra! He wore a white cloak that had no pockets, no hem. Mm. So therefore, since Pesach is the Miluim, uh. the inauguration of Chal Yisrael, the Indian of the Kittel, perhaps to Remez, to the fact that this is our Leda, this is when we inaugurate our service of Hashem, and we'll end, we know the Chassam Soifer brings down, the Kafachaim also brings down, that we have a Masaira, that the third base of Mikdash is going to be built on Pesach. Pesach, on Pesach right? right, from the Sefer Maeser Rokeach. But we're going to have a problem. And the problem is, when are we going to do the Chinuch? Because you can't be Mechanech the base of Mikdash on Pesach, because Ein Ma'arvin Simcha Basimcha. So says the Maeser Rokeach, the Chinuch will take place the seven last days of Nisan. By the way, Chassam Soifer points out, according to this, you don't have to come on to the reason of the Beis Yosef and the Magen Avram, that the reason we don't say Tachnon in the whole month of Nisan is because since most of the month has passed by Kedusha, the whole, the whole month, the whole month, month every month. single day of Nisan yeah. already has its own independent reason right. to, for Kedusha. So we should be Zaycha, and then the Zchus of the Leid of Kla Yisrael and the Chinuch of the Milum of Kla Yisrael, we should be Zaycha to be Mechanech, the third base Hamikdash, Mirza Hashem, yeah, and the seven days after this Pesach, year. including this next year. Monday after Pesach, I wish you all a chag kosher v'sameach, a good yantar. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.